How's it going everyone? This is Mr. Morales. We're going to take a look at the area of a circle again and we're going to modify it using functions. Using a function. So as you recall we have our little program here that calculates the area of a circle. So I'm going to input my name, or not my name, I'm going to input a name. Input radius and we have our result here with a radius of 4 the area will be 50 and so on and so forth as you can see so let's modify this code and let's use a function first of all what is a function think of a function as a mini program or a program within the big program uh, and the purpose is for reusability and simply or simply to break things down uh, making it more manageable so as you can see we already have two functions but we really haven't talked about functions so I'm going to use a function to handle just the area of a circle so let's try to let me do that let me show you what we're gonna do here so to create a new function I'm going to type the word function, the keyword function, and I'm going to call this new function area of circle. And I'm going to put open parenthesis and then I'm going to put an R. And pretty much this is the parameter, this is what it's going to take. So in order to run this function, it needs it needs something. Okay, and I'll explain to you what that is. Um, and basically what it needs in order to run is going to be the radius. Okay. And from the other block of code here, I'm going to cut this piece of code. I'll paste it there. And what our function is going to do is do the math. Well, the function is going to calculate the area of a circle so it's going to need the constant pi and notice that pi um, we, get, we get pi by using this math.pi. Now what the heck is that? So if I go to W3Schools it explains what that is. So it's a it's a math object, math.py, and it returns this long um, uh, number. Okay, and here you can you can explore all the different uh, math um, things that you can do with math. Okay, we're also going to use this one, math.pow which takes two values okay and it returns one value so pretty much what's going on is as it explains here returns the value of x to the power of y so eight so figure eight times eight and it returns sixty four so we're going to do the same thing when we do our math in this function which actually it's right here. So I'm just going to cut and paste it. So I'm going to use the return keyword. And so it's going to return math.pow. And in this case, it's just going to be r. That's the variable that I'm using here. Uh, r to the second power. And then I'm also going to multiply, whoops, I forgot to get this. Let's multiply. Multiply times pi. Let's not forget our semicolon. Okay, and let's see what else we need here. Okay, message, all right. Okay, yeah, let's do this. Okay, first name dot uppercase. 
Okay, and so here, what I'm going to do in line two is I'm going to call the function. I'm going to call this function. So in order to call it, I just type the name of the function, which is area of circle. And as you can see there, it's helping me out. I press tab, and there it is. Now, in order for this function to work, I need to give it, see, it's asking for, it needs the radius. In this case, it's the radius. So I get the, I know I have the radius from the user, which is up here on line 7. So I'm going to type radius. Okay. And what this is doing is it's calling the function. The function does its comp, uh, uh, computation and then it returns back the area of the circle and it the value will be in this area. Okay, and then the next line of code is just really the result variable, which is all of this highlighted area. So let's see if this works. So I'm going to save it. And let's go to here. Okay. Oh, let's refresh it. Let's choose another name. Let's go with four. Okay, Tom, the area of the circle is, and there it is. Our correct answer is there. So we know that it works. Okay. So now you have an idea of how to use functions. Um, now, in, in a program, you can have many functions, as you can see here. and you know, the, the purpose is, you know, maybe there's a, another area in your code that's going to call this function again. So reusability. So it's important. So instead of putting it in the controller function, we put it in a different f function separate. Okay. Now the challenge that uh, your program that you're going to have to do, it's going to be a challenge and this is what I want you to do. So I created this program enter A for area or P for perimeter. So let's suppose I just put a lowercase a I put 10 and 4 so remember I'm f I want to find the area so A for area, P for perimeter, A I want to find the area I'm give, uh, I give length 10 with 4 so the area is length times width, so the answer should be 40. So the area is 40. Great. So it works. Suppose I um, change it to capital A. Okay, it stays the same. That's good. Suppose I have P for perimeter. So remember, for P it's different. For P it's 2 times the length plus 2 times the width. So let's see what happens. The perimeter is 28. I'm testing everything. Okay, it stays the same. Good. Now if I put any other symbol other than the A or P, let's say put a Q, it gives me an error message. Please enter a valid operation. I could put anything there, error message, please put a different symbol there, I mean, it's up to you, whatever you want to put. But now that you know, that's, this is what your program is supposed to do, and that's your challenge. So I'm hoping that you can figure out how to do that. I want you to use, I'll give you a file, um, and as a matter of fact, let me bring up that file. So this is the file that I'm going to give you, and pretty much you're going to have what's called a controller function that is what's going to gather all the uh, users input and so I basically do have done that for you already uh, the type which is whatever the person has put a b a p or any other uh, letter I'm changing it to uppercase so it captures you know uppercase also and here's the trickiest part. 
or a, a tricky part is you're going to create three you know conditions or three you know your if statement uh, your if statement this first one I want you to create a condition where you compare the type variable to the user's input for area so that's what you're going to put in here so basically what you're doing is you're looking at type what you want to look is type and compare it to in this case we're looking at area so you're going to compare it to the letter A and this time it's the capital A because I'm converting it to uppercase so I'm pretty much saying if the type is capital A then I want you to do this I want you to call a function that takes the length and width and returns the area and save visit to the result variable so you're gonna call a function from here so down here you will create your function for the area of a rectangle and here you will create the function for our area for the perimeter of a rectangle and the two uh, formulas are different okay in your second part of your if statement this is where you're going to look compare the type with the uh, for the perimeter you know you want to basically look at whether type is equal to P capital P and if it is then you're going to call that function okay and I didn't talk about the second line of code but it's pretty, it's pretty much the same the second line of code will save the result along with some text to the output variable so basically when we let's see what did I do here when we have okay let's try that again here so basically it's I'm, I'm making sure in that part of the code I'm making sure that I'm including this text So I'm including the second line of code will include uh, some text, which is you know it'll say the area is or the perimeter is, okay. And then on your else, which is the catch all, here's where you're going to have your error message, which we saw earlier, um, asking the user to insert or input a proper. Uh, type you know a or p all right so hopefully you guys understand how to do this um, you can send me a message if you have any problems uh, good luck with the challenge